Hello there. If your project venture has begun to work in the agile mode, then you would be hearing terms like Scrum, Product Backlog, Sprint, Velocity, PO, Impediment and numerous more new terms that you might be wondering what they are. Then this Agile Methodology training series is for you. We will discuss all the significant Agile and Scrum principles in this series and you will have a clear understanding of what Agile is and how the end-to-end -end Agile approach functions after you have completed watching the series. Instead of doing a conventional tutorial session, we are going to use a fictional story of a restaurant owner Jane who wants a home delivery app and we are going to see how an idea in the mind of Jane is converted into an app using Agile methodology. We are using a story narration to help you grab the Agile concepts in an entertaining way. We did a survey and 90% voted for story series kind of tutorial. So we have tried this approach. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. We are going to post the future episodes periodically. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not already done so and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified when the videos are posted. We have got lots to cover. Let's get started. Jane is the owner of Wagon Gardens, a successful restaurant that serves vegan dishes. She has several branches, all strategically situated near the financial district, IT hubs, and her restaurant mostly caters to these workers for lunch and occasional dinners if they work late. Her clients love her food so much that she keeps getting frequent requests for weekday dinners and weekends for home delivery. Sometimes, if they are stuck at work, her clients also want the food to be delivered to their office. This is a fantastic additional revenue driver for Jane and also provides customers with great customer support to satisfy their needs. Jane thinks about these requests. The existing kitchen staff can also comfortably accommodate additional 20 to 30 percent orders. Therefore, Jane hires a few delivery boys and starts taking orders by phone. She gets a decent number of orders, but for both her team and the customers, the whole process was very cumbersome. Wrong items were sent several times. Customers had to wait over the phone for giving orders as she had fewer telephone lines. It also took too much time to order because the customers were not sure about what was available on the menu for the day. Delivery was late many a times as the delivery boys needed time to search the houses. Sometimes customers had to take up numerous calls to clarify their home address. For her, it was not scalable and it was a mess. She figured that if she had a mobile home delivery app built, then it would help her address all these issues. Customers didn't have to wait. They could easily see the items available on the menu. With a few clicks, they could order and indicate their location via phone GPS. The staff could see the ordered items properly, ensuring the delivery of the correct items. Delivery boys could also easily locate the customer's houses using the map softwares adhering timely delivery. Online payments could also be done easily. She ran past this idea with her team and they were enthusiastic. Jane searches for a reputed company that could help her create the mobile app and finds WebWeave software solutions which was apt for her requirements. The last time she hired a company to build an online reservation web app was a complete disaster because after six months of effort, they created something that did not meet her requirements. So this time, she made an in-depth research with the company to make sure it was good from all the aspects. It had very good reviews from many well-known customers. She fills in the contact us form and schedules a meeting with one of their consultants. Alex, one of the company's consultant, responds to Jane's query and he sets up an appointment for one hour to meet Jane to explore the project further. He shoots an email to Jane with a list of questions so that she is well prepared for the discussion. Jane confirms it, but she is curious to know how soon they could get the app up and running. Two to three months, Alex replies. 
Last time, it had consumed this much time to just finalize the requirements for the web app and also took several months before going online. So she was pleasantly surprised to know the time frame for the go live of the app and look forward to it. Alex meets Jane on the scheduled time and day at her office. After a short friendly chat over a cup of coffee, they go through a couple of questions that Alex had sent over the email. Jane explains the business reasons and her vision for the app. She then pauses for a moment in the middle of the discussions and asks Alex how they could create an app that could go live in three months when her previous online project had consumed the same time just for finalizing the requirements. Jane says that she is very curious to understand this part. Alex then powers his laptop and informs Jane that he can explain it with his presentation and she would be able to understand better. Alex shows the slide to Jane and starts explaining. This is the traditional software development model. It is called the waterfall method. It has five phases, requirements, design, build, test and deployment. In the requirements phase, there will be several sessions with the business team members to gather and document the requirements. The documentation in this method is extensive and the business requirements would be captured in BRD, that's the business requirement document, followed by capture of functional and non-functional requirements in the FRD, that's the functional requirement document. These documents would go to hundreds of pages and is the most time consuming part of the project. Let's say if there are 15 features for an application, all the requirements of all the 15 will be detailed out, documented, reviewed and approved by the business. It would consume 25-30% to 30 of the entire project timeline. So, if we keep 6 months project timeline, this phase alone can go up to 2 months. I think this is what you had experienced. Alex asks Jane and Jane nods. Alex continues and says, it would have taken another three months before you saw the application in the test environment and Jane nods to that as well. Alex continues to provide a quick overview on what happens behind the scenes. After the requirements are approved, this is followed by the design phase. This is where technical architects, solution designers come together and propose the designs and technical solutions for all your requirements. To finalize the designs and solutions, it can take two weeks to a month. Then comes the build phase. This is the stage where the software is actually developed. Software developers write their programs, create the required screen and features and so on. It can take up to 30% of the project timeline for the development process. We can claim two months. Once development is complete, we hop onto the testing phase which has two levels of testing. It can take up to 10 to 15% of the project time, we can say a month. We begin with system integration testing, which is done by the testers and the QA team. Once it passes SIT, then it will be available for UAT, which is the user acceptance testing. This is the stage where we can see the actual screens and the functionalities. That is about three months after the approval of the requirements. Jane nods and at that point of time if you had told them that it was not what you had envisioned and needed improvements or changes they would have said that they cannot accommodate any changes. It is because the change will again have to go over the entire life cycle of design, build, test and they would have informed you to raise a change request. Jane agrees and said that they decided to go live with what had been built because they had no extra budget. Jane then asked how his team would be able to overcome these challenges and if they were using a better software technology. Alex smiled and informed that there was no technology but the change was in the software development methodology and it was called Agile. Jane was interested in learning more about it. Alex moved over to the next slide to continue. Alex shows the slide to Jane and continues explaining. 
This is Agile methodology. It is an iterative development model. Here too, we will have the elicitation sessions, but they are documented in terms of epics and user stories. Very light documentation so that we can cut down time to half as Agile principle recommends interaction between team members to extensive documentation. Also, not all the requirements need to be detailed out. Only the requirements which are of top priority are to be detailed out. Alex continues, let's assume out of the 15 features, only 7 are absolutely necessary for the customers to start using the home delivery app. Then detailing and refinement of just those 7 features are required to begin with. This is also termed as MVP, Minimum Viable Product. More on that in our next meetings. Also, the development happens in a two-week cycle called Sprint. If you look at the diagram, it has all the phases similar to waterfall, but the requirements are limited to only those which can be completed in two weeks. So let's say in the first Sprint, two features have to be developed then the focus would be to detail out the user stories related to those two features so that it can be designed, developed, test and deployed. Also, the benefit in this model is that at the end of two weeks, you will be able to see the developed features and screens instead of waiting for months to get a glimpse of the product. If you want changes or improvements, they can be easily accommodated and can be picked up in the upcoming sprints. So let's say after three sprints, we have developed all the required seven features for MVP and you are happy with those seven, then we can deploy only that set and it can be available for the customers. So we can get a basic working version of the app out to the customers in three months as I indicated in my email earlier and then we can continue to add features every sprint and make it available to the customers on a regular basis. Jane's excitement seemed to grow and she replied, I like this model better. Can't wait to get started. She beamed with joy. What is the next step? Jane asks. Alex replies, discovery phase. Hope you enjoyed this episode and you have learned the below concepts on why to use Agile. Let's summarize. It is an iterative model. This model can be used when the requirements are not clear, which is the case in most of the projects. It is flexible, requirement changes can be easily accommodated. Time to market is considerably less and upgrades are frequently delivered. It is less risky. Also based on the feedback, course correction is easy. We will continue the story through the discovery phase. Wondering what a discovery phase is? Wait for the next episode. If you have not subscribed, please do so and click on the bell icon so that you will be notified when the next episode is out. Thank you.